When you're studying for the AP Biology curriculum, there are a few things to keep in mind, like the things that College Board seems to be weirdly obsessed with, and today we're going to talk about one of those, so stick around. Hi guys, my name is Mikey from AVO Prep Academy, and in this video, we're going to talk about glycolysis, but without going into the details of exactly what's happening in glycolysis, which is going to be another video, we're going to talk about something about glycolysis that College Board obsesses over. In fact, it's so weird how obsessed College Board is with this idea, to such an extent that glycolysis might just be like, why are you so obsessed with me? So what is this idea that College Board is obsessed with? Well, it actually starts off very simple, where glycolysis takes place. As you can see in this diagram, glycolysis is shown to take place in the cytoplasm. But what College Board really wants you to know is how the location of glycolysis is linked to two other very important ideas. And these ideas are going to be important throughout the entire course. So what are these two other ideas? Well, one is that glycolysis is universal, and the other is that glycolysis is ancient. So as you can see, we have this sort of a triangle where glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm, glycolysis is ancient, and glycolysis is universal. Let's talk about how these ideas are connected because that will explain why College Board is so obsessed with this particular idea. So let's start by linking the location of glycolysis with the idea that glycolysis is universal. Now, when we mention the word universal in biology, it's a little bit of a hyperbole because universal means that it should be true anywhere in the universe. But as for life, we only really have sample size of one, which is all the living things that we see on our planet that seem to be connected together through a common ancestry. But the important thing is the universality of life indicates that all cells, whether we're talking about prokaryotic cells on one hand or eukaryotic cells on the other, are going to perform glycolysis in very similar ways. And this means that glycolysis is a conserved trait, which indicates that it's very similar, if not the same, in pretty well all the cells that we see in the observable life's realm. But why does that relate to the idea of where glycolysis takes place? If you recall Unit 2, we learned about different types of cells, including prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And one of the features that distinguishes prokaryotic cells from eukaryotic cells is the lack of membrane-bound organelles, in such a way that prokaryotic cells were simpler, smaller, and didn't really have any partitioning of their metabolic processes. Now, if we think about this for a moment, if glycolysis is universal, and if it takes place both in prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, there's no way that it could take place in a membrane-bound organelle like the mitochondria or the lysosome because prokaryotes simply would lack those organelles. So the idea of linking universality of glycolysis to its location is one of the things that College Board wants you to know about. Now let's take a look at the other one, which is that glycolysis is ancient. Now, I've actually alluded to this point a little bit earlier when I mentioned that glycolysis is a conserved trait. See, when we look at the tree of life, whether we're looking at the eukaryota domain or the archaea domain or the eubacteria domain, we all did in fact descend from a last universal common ancestor way back when. And if glycolysis is in fact universal across all of these different domains of life, it must mean that it was already in existence prior to the divisions that we see in the different taxa today, which means that it must have arisen very early on and was simply conserved within the different taxa, including all of the living things that we see today. Another feature of glycolysis that actually supports this idea is the fact that glycolysis on its own is in fact anaerobic. Now I know that the products of glycolysis must be regenerated into NAD+. And you know what, we're going to get to all that stuff later, but glycolysis, if you take a look at the actual process, does not involve any oxygen at all. And the reason that this links to the idea of its ancient origins is that in the early days of our planet, there wasn't actually that much oxygen. In fact, we had these things called oxygen revolutions that occurred a couple of times throughout our Earth's history that actually increased the oxygen levels to what we see today. So when glycolysis initially originated as an ancient process, it was in fact anaerobic and is still anaerobic today, and is also conserved, which means that it occurs in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, therefore it must happen in the cytoplasm. So there's a little bit more to it than just simply where glycolysis takes place. As you can see, it links to the ideas of the actual metabolic reaction that we're dealing with. It links to the idea of evolution and the conservation of traits 
traits and also the different features of cells. So in AP biology, we're going to see a lot of problems that actually utilizes this very idea, linking things such as hexokinase or phosphofructokinase, which are enzymes involved in the glycolytic process and seeing how those enzymes can be universally used by most of the cells that we see, if not all of the cells that are given to you on the exam. In fact, even the universality of glycolysis across all the different cells within a single multicellular organism has been the topic of one of the questions in the past. For instance, they gave you a bunch of different cell types and they showed you the presence of various enzymes within each of these cell types within a table. However, one of the things that was common was that there was a particular enzyme that happened to be expressed in all cell types, regardless of their origin or the tissue type. And in that scenario, what AP Biology wanted you to know is that that enzyme, which is expressed in all the different cells within a single organism, was in fact an enzyme involved in the glycolytic process. So I know that we haven't really started the discussion of glycolysis. Now that's going to be a video to come, but I wanted you guys to just gain a quick glimpse into glycolysis and the location so that now, once we get to the cell respiration in our subsequent videos, we can have a fuller understanding of how important the processes are and how universal some parts of that process are going to be. So that's it for today. My name is Mikey from AVO Prep Academy. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so that we can bring you more quality content in the days to come. We'll see you very soon.